Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Jeremy Simon, one of the owners of 3D Universe, and uh, I'm going to invite my uh, guests and co-hosts to go ahead and turn on your video and audio and join me on screen here. Uh, I'm joined today uh, by, uh, for co-host, we have Jen Owen, who's the one dressed up as Yoda. Right? <laughs> Welcome, Jen. Jen is the creative Hello. director for 3D Universe, so I'm um, very pleased to have her uh, helping me out with this today. And uh, so I'm going to get to our guests in just a moment. I just want to kind of introduce what we're doing here. This is actually the first in a new series called 3D Universe Untethered. We're going to be covering lots of different topics. Today's is all about cosplay and 3D printing. So this will be a fun one. Um, and uh, join up to our mailing list if you haven't already so you can get notified about our future episodes. Uh, just go to shop3duniverse.com and scroll down to the bottom. You'll find the subscribe button there. We're working on getting a web page set up where we'll have all these different episodes and links to the recordings and all that good stuff. But for now, just sign up to our mailing list and you'll get notified. Uh, so this is our first episode in this new series. This is Next Level Cosplay with 3D Printing. And so we've, we've got some great guests today. I want to introduce uh, my big brother, actually, Dan Simon, who is uh, with us today. So uh, martial artist, blacksmith, award-winning brewer, and ethical hacker. It's clear that Dan gets bored easily. Add in a burgeoning passion for cosplay, and we're about one pastime away from filling his punch card and getting a free appetizer on his next visit. Welcome, Dan. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Also got my good friend Dave Lyson here today. Air traffic controller by day and cosplayer by night. Dave has enjoyed walking the con floor as everything from a suitcase to a droid. From foam to filament and everything in between, Dave lives by the mantra, if I can think it, I can build it. Dave, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jeremy. Awesome. So um, we're going to be, you know, keeping this pretty much just a discussion today. We are going to be sharing this uh, as a video recording, but also as an audio only podcast. So we're not going to be doing a whole lot of visual stuff today. But if you want to check out some photos of the projects we're going to be talking about, just head over to our blog, 3duniverse.org and search for cosplay. And you're going to find articles for both Dan's projects as well as Dave's. And you can see some photos of what we're talking about there. So with that, I'm going to hand things over to Jen to get us started. We've got a lot of questions to get through here. Do feel free to use the Q&A uh, panel if you'd like to ask questions. We'll do our best to get to those at the end. And if we run out of time, we can follow up by email with those of you attending if you have questions. So with that, uh, take it away, Jen. So um, as you can tell, I was a little excited um, about being able to do a cosplay podcast. and. Uh, I ordered my onesie and I'm really excited about it. Um, but I have been a cosplayer for quite a long time myself. And um, I was just wondering what got you both into um, cosplay in, in the beginning? What, what got you started? Um, Dave, how about you start? Uh, my nephew uh, is big into cosplay and he has been for a while. And he built an Assassin's Creed cosplay that basically started as just a white hoodie. And he was coming to visit Chicago and it happened to be on a, a Wizard World Con weekend. This is probably five years ago now. And I thought it would be fun and exciting if uh, I got dressed up to go to the con with him because I wanted to be the cool uncle. So I ordered a uh, Lord Raiden from Mortal Kombat 2 costume uh, off the internet thinking that, hey, I'm going to be cool and I'm going to get this this costume and it's going to be great. And it showed up at the house and it was basically just like a onesie with some crappy armor pieces that you could put on. And I had him send me pictures of what his costume looked like and it was amazing. And I knew I couldn't just show up in this off the shelf thing. So I jumped on the YouTubes, got on the interwebs and started figuring out how to build foam armor so that I could upgrade the costume and that from there I, I basically uh, from the time that I, I got onto the con floor and the first time somebody recognized the cosplay and then uh, wanted to commend me on my work and stuff like that it was over from there I fell in love that's awesome Dan how about you uh, unfortunately, not quite as altruistic as Dave's story. <laughs> Mine was uh, centered around Halloween and scoring free drinks in the bars. <laughs> Finding new and interesting ways. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Dave, what have been some of your favorite costumes and characters you have done over the years um, prior to 3D printed costumes? Uh, probably one of my favorites was uh, V from V for Vendetta. Mm -hmm. uh, such a cult classic film, a great graphic novel. Um, being able to, to bring a character to life that I hadn't seen walking around the con floor which is something that I'm always drawn to, is to try to, try to create something that I haven't seen before. Um, so V was probably, you know, outside of K2 was my favorite. That's awesome. Dan, how about you? Uh, for me, it was going for an after labs test subject, sort of a gender swap shell from Portal. Uh, <laughs> so learning to get around on jumping stilts and uh, again, with the Halloween theme in the bars, uh, as soon as the band that's playing starts in on House of Pain's Jump Around, the entire <laughs> bar rotates to the guy that's in Jumping Stilts. That's true. <laughs> it, it was an interesting night. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, so I've got a question. This is another one for both of you. We'll start with you, Dave. Um, I know both of you have been involved with cosplay from, you know, longer than you've been involved with 3D printing. So how has 3D printing changed things or improved things for your cosplay creations? Um, 3D printing has, has allowed for a level of uh, not only creativity, but um, when you start getting into the smaller and smaller pieces, uh, you can get levels of detail that trying to get it with foam or any other type of just quick and readily available materials was really kind of a pain. So being able to, to hone in on the, on the real fine details and just getting them to be printed close to perfection uh, kind of was a game changer for me. Nice, nice. How about you, Dan? Uh, very much that. It allowed for much grander uh, costume ideas. Yeah. So rather than just simple little parts that, you, that I would source out periodically, getting a full suit out of the whole deal. Uh, still working on perfecting work on soft parts, but hard yeah. parts and 3D printing are go hand in hand together. Nice, so it sounds like you might actually take on specific characters or costumes that you might not approach if you didn't have 3D printing? I would never have approached any of these without 3D printing, correct. Nice, okay. Uh, another question for both of you, and let's start with you, Dan, on this one. What was your first 3D printed piece of cosplay costuming? I think I see it there behind you. <laughs> you see it right behind me, and I think uh, sort of right of passage, the first component of that is always going to be the bucket. Uh, so start, starting on that helmet. Uh, not necessarily the easiest thing to start with, but it was probably the, it's, you have to start with a bucket. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, I, I was blown away when I learned that you were starting with the Mandalorian armor. That is a heck of a project to take on for your first project. How about you, Dave? Never like diving into the deep end. What was your first, Dave? Um, I ended up doing a lot of uh, small pieces just for, um, I did like mini helmets that I ended up giving out to my friends as I was just trying to hone in uh, the, the 3D printer and, and how to get the filament and everything to to do what I wanted. Um, the first probably piece for cosplay was a Jin Urso blaster mm -hmm. that I uh, had built for my girlfriend uh, who did a Jin Urso cosplay uh, opposite my K2. Very nice, very cool. Very cool. So this is a question for both of you as well. Um, what are some of the things that you have learned about 3D printing specifically for cosplay? Let's start with Dan. For me, it's paying attention to how everything's going to come together uh, before you actually start uh, with the printing. So as you're selecting designs you're going to use for your, uh, for your costume, knowing, especially when you're dealing with something like a large suit of armor, uh, knowing how all those pieces will fit together in the long run uh, can help save a fair bit of headache uh, down the road. Uh, so knowing how a jet pack will attach to a back plate, that kind of thing, how you're going to hook, how you're going to hook and harness things together. Mm -hmm. Dave? Uh, to echo a lot of what Dan said, uh, you know, a lot of planning, um, you know, uh, knowing that you're going to fail along the way. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and you're going to end up with, with, you know, I, I had so many fails when it came to printing helmets that 
uh, the first couple I just chucked and then I realized I could then use those pieces to try to figure out how to, how to finish them. So I started using more sanding on them and, and all that kind of stuff. How many helmets did you drop? I'll toss a question in. <laughs> oh, and shatter. Uh, <laughs> uh, I probably seven. Yep. <laughs> I, I, that, that helmet there has been its component pieces more times than I care to repeat. <laughs> hey, I guess that's part of the beauty of 3D printing. You can always print another, right? <laughs> well, yeah. you, you could glue them back together. The, the yeah. printed materials are fine. It's just that super glue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so for those of you who know me, you know I'm a gearhead, so I, I want to ask about what kind of uh, 3D printing uh, gear you guys have been using for your cosplay stuff. Let's start with you, Dave, on this one. Uh, I started with a Creality Ender 5 Plus um, because of the price point and the fact that it had a larger bed. Uh, and then I was also able, uh, I, I have on loan a Raze 3D Pro 2 Plus, uh, which is also a, a pretty giant piece of machinery and the the large senate guard helmet that's behind me was able to be printed in one shot nice nice how about you dan what are you using uh in the in the realm of it's all about who you know uh, an <laughs> ultimaker three <laughs> uh, relatively small print bit but a great printer yeah nice nice and you use actually you've used some of the dual extrusion stuff with that right doing some yes uh for work. a lot of the support materials would use pva on dual extrusion nice nice that's really cool. Um, Dan, please tell us about your serial kilter heavy infantry Mandalorian armor inspiration and the process you went through to create it. That's a beautiful. Uh, <laughs> uh, started obviously with uh, Disney's Mandalorian series. Uh, after watching that, prior to watching that, everyone that is into Mandalorian into Mandalorian armor would be doing Boba Fett or and maybe a few people out there will go into Django Fett, which doesn't look too much different. Uh, <laughs> after Mandalorian aired, everyone was going to Din Djarin. Uh, so fear I'd be at least a little bit different and take on something a little more substantial with the uh, heavy infantry, aka Paz Vishla from the Cedar. I think he came in in episode three mm -hmm. and then briefly okay. later. And then um, what what was the most challenging piece of your armor? The jetpack. Holy <laughs> crap, the jetpack. Uh, I think that was 22 different pieces on the, on the printer. Not necessarily different print jobs, but 22 pieces that had to all be connected in together and then figure out how to harness it in and everything else. So that was where I started to realize that, hmm, some thought ahead of time to how this connects in would have been beneficial. <laughs> Yes. And then the burning question, what does a kilted Mandalorian wear under his kilt? <laughs> uh, exactly what you would expect. Uh, boots, <laughs> chain greaves, and uh, knee plates. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, all right, so I've got a question for uh, for Dave. The next couple are about the project that you've done uh, on a K2SO costume. So tell us about that costume and why you decided to go with something so challenging. When it was announced that Star Wars Celebration was going to be in Chicago, uh, I knew that I was going. And then the next thing that came to my brain was, uh, what am I going to go as? Because I'm not just going to show up in a cool Star Wars t-shirt. Um, and then I wanted to find something that I hadn't seen before. So I kind of did some scouring around the internet to see if I could find K2 cosplays. And I, I found some stand behind puppets um, that have been done really well, uh, but I, I was hard pressed. I found one other cosplayer that was actually in a costume. Um, so I was like, okay, if I'm gonna go, I, I'm gonna go with something that, that literally is head and shoulders above everything. <laughs> else. Um, and, and then, the idea for K2 was born. Nice. Yeah, the, the proportions make it pretty challenging. You know, those of you who have seen K2SO know that, you know, he stands, what, seven feet tall or so and very long arms that, compared to ours anyway. So uh, you were up on stilts for this costume, right? Yes, that was, uh, that was the first thing I bought. 
uh, for the costume was I got some drywall stilts and I spent, oh, a solid six months uh, walking around on them pretty regularly because understanding that I was going to be on a convention floor and people, you know, sometimes don't exactly understand personal space. Yeah. Um, if I got bumped into or something like that, I wanted to make sure that I was comfortable uh, with being able to walk around. Sure, sure. And then, of course, the other challenging part is the, 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 the arms. You're having to extend off of your arms to make them longer and have some hands that are still in your vision. You wanted something functional. So for that part, you partnered up with uh, uh, Ivan Owen, who is actually the co-designer of one of our first 3D printed prosthetic devices that's been used for the Enable volunteer community. Uh, and you also partnered up with myself and our other team member here at 3D Universe, Dan Pellin. So tell us a little bit about that process, the design and putting that whole thing together. What was that like? Um, in a word, it was amazing. Um, it was so great that, you know, I came to you and I was like, Jeremy, I got an idea. Um, and I don't know how the hell to do this. So since maybe this is your realm, if you could help me out and you got so excited about it. And then you reached out to Ivan and Ivan got so excited about it. Like everybody that was involved on the project was, was just so in from the beginning that it was amazing. And it was trying to figure out how far off of my, my arm did it have to go? How much mobility were we going to get out of the hands, you know, utilizing some of the, the enable style uh, prosthetics. Um, and, and I, you know, I think the first version uh, had a, had a lazy Susan mechanism in it so that I could, I could actually rotate my wrist. Um, and then we realized we really didn't need that. And through the process, um, I think now technically we're on version three, maybe, Sounds right. um, which we, we've moved into just something as simple as a glove that has all of the, the attached lines so that I can operate the fingers. And it literally just slides on <laughs> and it gives me yeah. mobility. So you actually have individual finger control. Yes. That's terrific. Which is, is so much fun at a convention because uh, nobody expects that. Yeah. They, they expect it to just be kind of a static prop. And then when they come over to me and I wave or something like that, or I give them a thumbs up, it just completely blows their mind. That's terrific. So besides the, the, the arms and hands that you just showed us, what was the most challenging part of this uh, outfit for you? Uh, probably the helmet. Um, trying to figure out how to, how to have a helmet that has droid eyes, but gives me some kind of field of vision. Um, so since nobody had created one before, it was literally saran wrapping my head <laughs> and, and trying to get a pattern and, and going off of, you know, putting a bike helmet on and all kinds of stuff. Um, and, and what I quickly realized was I, I never have a good enough field of vision with the helmet on. Because originally it was just a, a couple cuts uh, on uh, the sides of the eye. So like, here's the helmet. And originally, just next to the eye, there were little slits for me to look out of, mm. um, which really didn't give me any field of vision. So as a last minute hack, I literally just took, you know, a box cutter and hacked across from eye to eye. Um, but then when the eyes are lit up, you can't really tell that I'm looking through there. Yeah. So, you know, this, this, this was probably the hardest piece. And how long did that whole project take you start to finish for the K2SO? Uh, probably eight months. Wow. Um, a lot of work. I had to create all the patterns from scratch. Um, a huge learning curve because I hadn't done a whole lot of work with foam. Yeah. I had done real small armor pieces for Raiden, but doing something that was going to fully encase my body, I, I hadn't tried. So, you know, I ripped through... Oh, I'll, I'll say it now, hundreds of dollars of materials that all just went in the trash because I completely mucked them up. Nice. <laughs> and then, so then you finally got it all done. You show up in costume at the Comic-Con convention. What was the crowd reaction like? They, dead stop. Um, I, I got 
f in the full cosplay uh, underneath a set of stairs. Um, and then I, as I came around the corner, the first people that saw me literally came to a dead stop and stared. And, you know, it's, for me, like, that's what it's all about. Like, you, you build these things to show off. And all the work and all the, you know, as uncomfortable as it is to be up on the stilts and you can't really move all that well, um, to have that sort of reaction, it just was completely validating. Yeah, that's very cool. And I, I understand you actually won an award for this costume, right? Yes. Uh, uh, the two greatest achievements of this costume are uh, at Star Wars Celebration, Joshua Lee, who actually created K2 as a droid for Lucas, um, found me on the convention floor and commended, like, complimented me on my costume, on my cosplay and on the hands and how it all worked and everything because they had built uh, segments of the, the costume for Alan Tudyk in the movie. Um, and then at, at Wisconsin Comic Con, I won first place for best uh, Star Wars cosplay. Fantastic. Cool. Congrats. So, um, Dan, having a brother who's big into 3D printing, what took you so long? <laughs> Pure boneheadedness. Uh, <laughs> It honestly had not occurred to me until I got the 3D printer that it would be a really good thing to use for cosplay. Uh, just, it, it, I have no one to blame but myself on that. Yeah. You know, if you um, subscribe to our newsletter, you get oh, you cool stories one? like about Dave and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Um, so I also have a question. I, I saw you had mentioned somewhere online that you super glued yourself to things a lot. How often did that happen? And who did you super glue yourself to? Uh, it's more who in the house have I not super, by glue, super glued myself to? Dogs, wife, uh, tables. <laughs> I think the, wor the worst was actually when a, I had a hole in the glove that I finally realized I should be wearing. Uh, I had a hole in the glove that the super glue ended up going in through. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was special. <laughs> super gluing myself to my own glove. <laughs> Very difficult to get any uh, uh, nail polish remover inside of your glove to get rid of the super glue. Yeah, right, right. Okay, so I've got a question for both of you. Now that we're in this sort of pandemic and, and conventions are being canceled for the, un, you know, for the foreseeable future, are you going to continue to make cosplay stuff? And if so, what are your plans for wearing them? Let's start with uh, Dan on this one. Uh, definitely going to continue wearing the uh, Halloween is not going to be as big of a thing this year out by us, but uh, the costume itself is actually kind of perfect for the COVID area uh, or COVID era and that there's, I've got multi-layer mask or multi-layer uh, uh, fabric underneath the helmet then the whole face shield of the helmet itself a uh, large blaster cannon that can keep people well over six feet away <laughs> uh, so that part of it works there's going to be some uh, halloween activities that, will, that i'll probably be out and about to entertain kids with sounds like fun how about you dave um definitely going to keep building cosplays uh, just for the sake of just wearing them regardless of, of what's going on it could be a tuesday and i get bored and it's like i'm going to dress like a pirate today it's yeah. it's fun to just have that ability to to do and and you know just kind of bring a bright spot to the world yeah especially now that's right we need it more now than ever yeah um dan i uh, <laughs> left a comment on facebook uh challenging you to dress in your Mandalorian armor and go to the grocery store and take a photo with Star Wars fruit snacks. Um, since this is being recorded, I would like to get that on camera. I will commit to better than Star Wars fruit snacks. More appropriate than Star Wars fruit snacks. Oh? Uh, oh, Bounty. what is that? Bounty what? paper towels. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, we'll hold Perfect. you to it. So check back to our blog to see photos of that, folks, 3duniverse.org. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question for both of you. Um, we'll start with Dave. 
Do you have any advice for others who are considering using 3D printing for their cosplay costumes? Um, yes, understand what you're getting into. Um, it is not a plug and play type uh, hobby. You're going to get frustrated um, and, and you, you have to, <laughs> for me, it was going down the rabbit hole of Thingiverse and things like that. And I'm like, oh my God, look at all the things I can print. This is amazing. <laughs> um, and then going, yeah, I need to stop printing stuff. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of people out there, a lot of cosplayers out there uh, that have uh, amazing uh, YouTube videos and blogs and everything to try to help you. You know, you guys have some great uh, information on your blog about different filaments and temperatures and all that stuff. And it can be overwhelming. Um, but if you just take it step by step, you'll get there and it's going to be amazing. That's cool. Dan? I think along similar lines, I would say embrace failure. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to happen uh, and you can learn a lot from it. Like I said early on, I can't, I think I probably dropped that helmet when I was initially gluing it all together. Uh, eight plus times. Uh, that first time was that finally had the whole thing in, in one piece. Uh, so I think eight different uh, prints finally came together and were and I, I got them all properly aligned with the super glue and had it finally cured. This is before I learned about the like quick uh, curing spray to hit super glue with so it cures even faster. So mm -hmm. I glued myself to the helmet multiple times, lost a lot of skin doing that. I uh, finally had it all in one piece and then it fell off of a counter and broke into all eight component pieces when it hit the floor. Uh, so oh. lear learning from that how to better put it together next time and slowly reinforce it more and more and more until now it can probably take a good fall, though I'm not testing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, this is for both of you as well. Uh, we'll start with Dan. What's your next 3D printed cosplay costume character? I think my wife is listening in right now because she will kill me if I start on it. Uh, <laughs> but probably a Havoc Trooper. Uh, another head to toe armor. Uh -huh. Nice. <laughs> Just to be difficult. <laughs> Well, I mean, you, you've built the Mandalorian armor. I mean, how hard can anything else be right now? <laughs> There's actually more coverage on Havoc. Uh, I mean, that's true. <laughs> it's going to be brutal. Um, for me, I think I'm looking at uh, the Jedi Temple Guard, specifically from Star Wars Rebels. Nice. Cool. Nice. All right, well, I think that's all the questions we have right now. And it doesn't look like we have uh, questions really in the Q&A. We got a, a nice compliment, uh, Dave, for your uh, K2SO suit uh, from Darren, who says that's amazing. And that he's always amazed with K2 builders. Thank you, Darren. And uh, since we don't have other questions, we're going to go ahead and start to wrap things up here. Um, uh, let's talk about where folks can go if they want to see more about the work you guys are doing. Uh, do you guys like have anything on social media or are there things people can follow? Let's start with you, Dave. Uh, right now, I, the only way, all my stuff is posted on Instagram and it's uh, Unbound Geekdom. Unbound um, Geekdom. Excellent. Yep. Because... Uh, it knows no bounds and I will do just about anything. Awesome, awesome. And how about you, Dan, I got anything online? Uh, nothing terribly official. I think most, anything uh, dealing with the cosplay side on the 3D printed and so the Mando currently will be uh, sent over your way. So you'll see it on 3D Universe, I'm sure. Awesome, so that's on our blog at 3duniverse.org. And again, if you guys wanna check out photos of both of these projects that we talked about today, head on over there to the blog, 3duniverse.org, just do a search for cosplay, and uh, you're going to uh, find both of their articles and write-ups and a bunch of photos and everything. Um, now, we do have a couple of questions coming in here, so let me switch to those real quick, see if we can cover these before we wrap up here. A uh, question from Kent. What do you think about service bureaus helping cosplayers? Um, so let's, uh, let's go to Dave on that first. Any thoughts on that? 
so, uh, service bureaus? Well, I assume he's talking about 3D printing service bureaus. Ken, maybe you can type in if that is what you're referring to there. So a 3D printing service bureau would be somebody that actually offers services where they 3D print things for you. Uh, somebody might not have a 3D printer of their own. Do you think that could have a fit for a cosplayer that might not have their own 3D printer? Oh, sure. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, cosplayers have been doing this prior to 3D printing. There was vacuum forming and, and resin printing and, and um, you know, people have been buying molds and, and raw, raw prints of, of different pieces for, for a long time. So if you know that you're not going to be doing a whole lot of printing and you're just kind of needing a one or two piece print, yeah, it might be you know, if somebody doesn't actually have it, you know, I, I've seen cosplayers reach out for commission pieces as well. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I think that uh, I would agree with that, too. Just having worked with some of these service bureaus, it certainly can be useful. You know, pricing might be an issue. You're going to have to pay per job, and it's going to depend on how much stuff you're printing. If you try to do a project like what Dan did there, it's going to get a little expensive. So you might want to think about just getting your own printer at that point. But certainly an option for somebody looking to test the waters. I think uh, another... there's also, sorry, I think there's also a good, uh, good chunk of folks on like Etsy, where you can, where you can get the, the basic bones of something like a, a blaster or something, and then you can order that and then, and then fix it up the way you like it and paint it the way you like it. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I got another question here from uh, I, Nico. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Do any of you have experience with full color 3D printing? Um, so that's worth talking about because I, I, you know, I have minimal experience with it because we test a lot of 3D printers here. So we've done some testing with the type of printers where they, they print an object just like any other FDM 3D printer, just with a, a single color material. And then it has sort of an inkjet mechanism built in where it's actually coloring layer by layer as it goes. Uh, those have been some of the more you know, cost effective types of, of full color 3D printing that, that I've explored. Um, there are other options available, but they can get fairly pricey when you get into something like you know, uh, HP's you know, multi-jet fusion printing and stuff like that. It can get pretty expensive. Um, but it, you know, since we brought up this topic of color, maybe I can have you guys both comment a little bit about that side of it. Of, you know, I, I know that both of you have taken the approach of, of printing the part without worrying about color. And then you, you use painting techniques to, to apply that color after the fact. So let me go to Dan on this first. What, what was your experience like on that? And, and tell us briefly about the process that you use there. Yeah, I think the, the color that you're printing in really doesn't come into play on the cosplay side. So you've got so much finishing work uh, to do on it to make it presentable, uh, to remove all evidence of print lines, everything else. You're going to be doing more sanding than you can comfortably imagine, uh, followed by using a filler primer, followed by more sanding, uh, and then find, uh, the filler primer alone is going to be uh, take it to a gray or whatever color your primer is, uh, followed by then your final paint job and everything else. So there's yeah. just so much finishing work that the color of the print, never you never see it. Well, that's a really good point, actually, that I hadn't thought about. So when you're 3D printing, you know, you're often going to have some somewhat visible layer lines. And so sanding is an important part of getting the kind of finish that you want. So that might mean that full color 3D printing isn't even the ideal solution for this anyway, because you want to, you know, the sanding is going to take off anything that's applied on the, on the surface anyway, right? Yeah. Dave, any other thoughts on that on the coloring side of things? I mean, I, I would just completely agree with everything Dan said. Um, yeah. If you hate sanding now, you're definitely going to hate sanding later. <laughs> yep. You are going to sand so much, but <laughs> it's, it's to get that, you know, it, it all comes down to what is your personal preference? You know, um, could a cosplayer take a piece right off the printer and put it on a costume and wear? Probably not. So as far as color is concerned, you know, I, I kind of go with whatever's in stock. Nice, nice. Okay, well, that's all the questions we have coming in right now. So feel free to reach out to us by email, info at 3duniverse.org. If you have other questions, we'll be happy to get back to you. Uh, do uh, stay tuned in for our future episodes. As I said, we're going to have all kinds of other topics that we cover in these 3D Universe Untethered sessions. Just sign up for our mailing list, and you'll get notified about those. Head over to shop3duniverse.com. Scroll down towards the bottom, and you'll see the subscribe button there. 
I want to thank uh, Jen for co-hosting with me today, and I want to thank our guests, Dave and Dan, for joining us. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks, all of you. Thank you. And thanks for all of you who attended. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.